Hello and welcome, beautiful ones. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm Jocelyn of Gothic Genie Insights, as you already know, and it is a pleasure to be chatting with you. Today's topic is psychic intuition with an emphasis on intuition because not everybody believes in psychic. And if we use a term that we have a kind of a blockage to, we may not receive the message. But if we use a term that's a little bit more palatable, um, then we may be able to see things in a different perspective. So I'm really going to try to emphasize the intuitive part and the psychic parts going to come up inevitably uh, because it's part of my own journey. But if we don't believe in psychics or if we don't believe ourselves to be psychic, even if we believe in psychics in general, um, if we have a blockage to that word in any way, then we may not necessarily receive this message. Whereas intuition comes in so many different forms that I think that most of us can kind of agree that it exists in some way. Um, whether it is those little signals that we give off through body language and things like that, or whether it is um, just something that is from unspoken communication or something that goes in more terms of logic and predictability. But whatever we believe intuition to be, I think that most of us can kind of agree that it, it, it does exist. With that being said, I know I'm kind of breaking away from the whole goth thing right now, but I was in a beachy mood. I got my Jimmy Buffett shirt on. Um, you know, I was just kind of like going with what I felt. And I'm very much into marine life and um, ocean and anything tropical. And I'm just drawn to it. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to go with what I'm feeling today. Um, and in a way, I'm kind of disappointed with myself because I just got my braces done in black and orange and uh, they are cutting my mouth so bad. <laughs> I need to get like uh, some of that wax and put it, well, I have the wax. I just, you know, I'm too lazy to put it on because I have to put it on in strips or that's the way it's most comfortable for me. But I got bracelets to match and I'm so excited about that. But I'm like, it kind of clashes with my whole idea where I was like, I'm going to wear black and orange for the next month. And that didn't happen. <laughs> anyway, back to intuition here. So, um, when it comes to, like I said, the terminologies, um, if we think of it in terms of intuition, we think that's a natural thing. We don't think that there's anything metaphysical about it. Um, but in my own journey, I used to be able to pinpoint things and um, I would think, okay, so this is going to happen, but not yet. I still have a little bit of time before that happens. So, um, you know, as we get closer to that, then I can change around or, you know, kind of pull back. Well, sometimes my timing wasn't always right and the outcome that I saw would come a lot faster. And um, so if I feel something now, I try to listen to it and not just say, okay, well, everything's fine for now. So, um, you know, I'm just going to, you know, go with it for now and just accept it because otherwise, if I don't listen to that, I'm scrambling later on to make those changes to accommodate what I already knew was coming. Um, example, 2020, it's been a tough year for so many people and, um, my heart really goes out to everybody that has been affected in some way, shape, or form or another. Words can't even say. But when it comes to our personal journeys, I felt that there was going to be a major shift and a major change and that we would have to navigate around some kind of change. I thought it was going to be a technological change. What I sensed this to be was that people were going to start working at home because they could. No other reason than they wanted to. I, that's what I thought. And, um, you know, I had all this other stuff and I was trying to tell people like, you know, look for other opportunities. And I didn't, I don't know anybody in the restaurant business, but I, this kept coming to me. Um, you know, it's going to come down to people not serving in restaurants, but rather, um, 
take out and carry out and things like that because if they could do that and make x amount of tips off of each you know assuming people tip i would hope so uh you know but meal per meal they could probably make more money off of that than actually um uh, having a sit down environment. So I was seeing all of these things, um, making things seem more VIP as well, um, from having appointments for places and things like that, just little snippets of the big picture. But I'm an optimist. <laughs> I didn't see that this was going to be why. Um, I really, I had no idea. Um, and so, I, I was even stocking up on things way before and that is kind of in my nature to be that way but I was becoming obsessive with it to where I was like up at four in the morning um looking at my coupons and deciding how much of everything that I needed like really getting obsessive with it um because I would be like we're gonna need this we're gonna need this and I don't know why but it was almost a compulsion so my intuition was going off. Um, I don't know where that was coming from. Possibly having heard, I won't say the name of this um, reason for it because I don't want, you know, uh, any flags to my video on talking about misinformation or anything of that sort. But perhaps hearing the term might have sparked something in me to where I was kind of going into my germaphobe mode or something like that. Maybe that's what it was. It could have been something like that that sparked that intuition, sparked that primal fear, the fight or flight. You know, it, it could have been something as simple as that. It may not have been psychic in the metaphysical sense at all. Um, but something was speaking to me and saying, you need to stock up and you need to prepare for things. You need to make it to where you only go out to the store once a month if you can. Um, and you need to start revamping how you work. Um, and last year I decided this year I'm not doing events uh, in person anymore because I just wasn't seeing where that was going to be likely or where it was going to work for me. So, I mean, you know, where it comes from, who knows? Um, but I, I kind of attribute it to um, when I hear a word or when I hear something, I get a vibration on it. And I sometimes have an intuition. Sometimes if somebody tells me a name, I can, you know, just for fun, <laughs> I'll just read into it to see if I'm accurate or not. And just from a name. I, I don't read birthdays. I know nothing about um, astrology at all, except my own, because I'm a little bit self-centered, if I'm being honest. Um, so, where was I? Um, intuition. Oh, okay. So, when somebody says something, you know, a, a word or a term or a name, I get senses from it no clue where it comes from. Maybe it's just because if somebody says the name Brian, maybe I'm reading into all the Brian's that I've met before. Um, you know, I, I don't know how to, I am a synesthete. I taste words and colors and things like that. So if somebody says a name that I've never heard before, maybe I'm getting a flavor that I'm like, oh, this makes me feel this way or that way. So maybe I'm reading into that. I mean, there's a billion different possibilities of what it could be. So with that being said, with that considered for your own journey, think about this. And I'm going to try to um, give some insight on how to unlock your own intuition. Um, I also want to say that what we get could be imagination. It could be simply imagination. It may not be anything any deeper than that. But one thing that I would always do once I started learning about, you know, mindfulness and, you know, different paths in life and all this, I would come into the moment and I'd say, okay, so now I'm comfortable with where things are at. Um, but what do I want for my future? I'm comfortable now, but I, could I see myself getting bored in the next couple of months? Could I see myself being happy in the next couple of months? What do I see outside of myself in this path? Because even though I'm comfortable, what happens if things change? What happens if 
management, new management takes over the job that I'm doing now. And when they come in, I don't quite understand what they're doing. Chances are any change like that is going to be gradual to where you are able to adapt. Not always, but you know, the hope is that it'll be a slow change. Um, or is it going to be something I'm thrust into and I'm not happy with? You know, there is that possibility as well. But um, but what if I'm not happy with those changes? Or what if they decide that um, basically that my job doesn't exist anymore, that they, you know, are downsizing their company? What will I do then? So those things are not necessarily things that are going to happen. But if we look at the possibilities... Um, you know, we can kind of get an idea of, okay, what would I do if that happens? And not in the way that it's bringing up anxiety or depression or anything like that. Not in the way that it's bringing up panic, but in the way that we're saying, okay, I'm in control. I can choose a path. What do I see for myself? What do I want for myself? And so my, um, my method of this is to take two main paths and you can do three or four or five or however many. Um, but I try to choose two, maybe three, uh, because it's a lot easier to focus on short term things than it is to focus on, or not short term. It's a lot easier to focus on a, a smaller amount of things than it is to focus on multiple possibilities. So what happens if I stay on the path I'm in three months from now? Usually I do three months, six months, a year. Um, if I want to do a more immediate kind of a gauge, I'll say a month, three months, six months, and then, you know, go from there if I need to. Um, and sometimes I'll end with three or five years. Generally speaking right now, the way that my gifts work, I can see um, in threes. Uh, that could change, but it kind of stops around the five-year. Once you start getting into the 10-year mark, it feels like it's very, very distant. So um, so right now, the way my gifts work is more in the immediate future because we do have choices, and sometimes that's going to change things. Um, you know, if we decide that we're taking path A, then... The path for B may not manifest. Of course, it could, depending on what it is. Um, as an example, um, if there's a possibility for me to have another job at, we'll say, the one-year mark, and I take path A, and path A doesn't work out for me, so I might get stuck on path B where I get this opportunity out of something that... Um, something that kind of just happened. Whereas if I'm on path B, path B may be that I decide to, to make moves to a different job. I may get to that outcome before that one year mark, but let me be a little bit more clear <laughs> because I'm all over, all over the place with this. So if I'm on path A and path A is to stay where I'm at and be happy with that. And about a year from now, um, my job is downsized and it doesn't exist. So now I have to find other work. I may end up with a new job completely. Something I didn't expect maybe. Maybe something that's better than what it was before and, and brings me happiness. And somewhere that I, I truly can see myself working for a little bit longer. Or for a little while before I make another move. Uh, because I believe that life is full of different moves and different challenges and choices. So that's path A. If I'm on path B and path B is to say, okay, I'm not happy where I'm at. I'm content, but I'm not happy. So I'm going to try to find a new job. So in six months, I might have a new job. But then in another six months, which equals a year, there may be another opportunity that opens up. And that may be an opportunity that I would have wanted at some point. But depending on what my choices are, then I may not notice it or I may decide that I want to look around. So if I'm happy where I'm at, I might not look and totally ignore that particular outcome. Just because I'm not looking for any opportunities. I'm not keeping open to possibility. I resigned myself that this job that I found 
within six months is what I want. That In that way, I may push away the outcome that comes along within a year. Um, and that does not have to be a bad thing. It's just a choice. And so when we look at choices as being right or wrong, sometimes it's just about a choice. Um, but I think that it's always helpful to stay open to all possibilities because there could also be the possibility that, yeah, I'm happy where I'm at. I don't want anything new or different. But if we stay open to possibilities, we could kind of look at it and say, okay, well, I wasn't expecting this to come along. This looks interesting. I want to see what's, what this can bring, what challenges and, and what positive outcomes might this bring? What are the pros and cons of this particular path? You know, so to me, that's what intuition is. It's being able to stay in the present to kind of think about what could happen, what might happen. It may not, but what could happen? And then kind of just navigating around a particular um, desire or a possibility or an opportunity and just remaining open. It doesn't mean that we have to take every opportunity, but it's more about knowing that we have control and we have power over our path in some way. Because when I have been in that place where I felt helpless and I felt stuck and I felt trapped, um, I would get frustrated. I would not be happy. I mean, that's human nature. And, you know, it just would manifest in terms of maybe me being a little bit grouchy <laughs> or me being a little bit frustrated and letting that frustration show. Um, though when we remind ourselves that we have a choice, that we don't have to, that we don't have to stick with one thing, or that um, even if we're happy where we're at, that we still have opportunities and possibilities, it can make us feel less trapped. And um, my braces are really cutting into my mouth. <laughs> I'm like struggling just to enunciate. It can make us feel like we're less trapped. And, um, and through that, I think that we can find our path wherever it may be and I do believe that paths can change over time it doesn't have to be set in stone or any one certain way and I believe that above all we tend to look for the path that we're supposed to be on we ask ourselves what our purpose is and I think that we can make our path we can choose our path and you know, I think that that's one of the most beautiful things about it um, we spend all this time looking for a path to be on our purpose in life when the answer was within us all along that it's up to us to decide and up to us to choose what it is from day to day um, you know now I'm happy where I'm at but if I decide right now in this particular moment that I want to be a singer I could do that I could make it happen would it be a wise choice probably not because I'm not much of a singer but you know I could <laughs> I just have to use that intuition to look at, okay, what happens a month from now if I take that route? What happens three months if I take that route? Personally, I'm not seeing anything good <laughs> if I decided that. Um, yeah, not seeing anything good from that path at all. Um, <laughs> it'd be interesting because I am seeing where it would... <laughs> I would get popular based on people coming to see my videos just because it would be so horrible. So I'd get popular in that way. Like this girl really doesn't think she's good, does she? That could be interesting. You know, popularity versus being liked is another, you know, another question here that we can uh, look at with intuition. I got sidetracked there for a moment, but, um, but yeah, to be able to intuitively see the possibilities. And is it imagination? Probably. Is it, um, is there any factual basis to it? Maybe if we look at logic, maybe if we looked at, at predictability, which could be that whole little vision that I just had, um, predictability of what people like. It's like something bad and horrible that they can't look away from. So yeah, it would serve to purpose that people would be sharing my videos if I were singing. Um, you know, I mean, 
what, what does it really come from? Is it metaphysical at all? Is it because we're going back into um, familiarity or making those associations? Um, if if you ask me about um, if you ask me about somebody named Dana, maybe I'm going by every Dana that I've ever met. I really haven't met any. Um, so I, you know, but again, you know, I am a synesthete. Maybe I'm picking up a flavor or a color associated with that, that name. Maybe it's all association. Who knows? But if it can help us, then I think that it could be a good thing. If we get some benefit from it, then, you know, as long as it's not hurting ourselves, as long as it's empowering us to make a positive decision that isn't going to be impulsive that isn't going to be um you know as I said you know if I decide to be a singer um a decision that's not going to be impulsive or um something that's going to get us into debt or um something that is going to throw our entire track off or affect us negatively in some way I think that it could be a good thing to utilize it um and that's pretty much it. If you um, if you have any questions, you can join my group right now. There is no charge for this group. Actually, this group is going to remain free. Um, Gothic Genie's Self Empowerment Group. Um, so as long as that group is open, it will remain free. It's on Facebook, um, and I do have some workshops that you can uh, pay for. Uh, um, I can't. Uh, I can't think. <laughs> I either can't talk or I can't think. One of the two. Uh, Self-care workshop, which is work at your own pace. It's basically just, you know, making sure that you're getting those little moments for yourself and um, kind of just going along and where you're able to, um, you know, remind yourself how important self-care is in your journey. I have another one. New year. Well, it's new you now. Toward the beginning of the new year, I did have it as new year, but now it's just new you because we can have a rebirth at our birthday or we can have a rebirth just because we say we want one. It doesn't matter why. <laughs> and um, through that, um, I, I do offer some one-on-one, -on -one, but through that, it is to help you to come to your best path, what it is that you want. And you can change that path at any time, as I mentioned. Um, you know, you can, uh, the hope is that if you take that particular course that you will learn to go through those changes, uh, on your own, um, that you will take those things with you. And I know myself when, even when I'm in spiritual practice, it's like, I forget certain things. <laughs> um, so I may not always remember to do the things I'm supposed to, but when I remember, they help. So it's one of those things you might have to remember before you're able to incorporate those ideas again. But the hope is that you will take something with you that will benefit you in the long run. However, if you need to take the course again to have the one-on-one -on -one or um, book a session outside of that course, I'm available for that. I do one-on-one -on -one sessions as well outside of workshops. So if you need something... Um, feel free to contact me. Again, Gothic Genie's Self-Empowerment Group. That group is free. Um, I do offer a little bit of insight here or there. Um, and if you want free feedback, that would be the place to get it. I'm not always available for questions. It just depends. Um, but I am trying to make it to where people can benefit from that group in some way. It is slow going. <laughs> um, if you uh, if you want to book a session, Gothic Genie Insights at hot, no, Gothic Genie Insights at gmail .com. Please put something like reading or attention or something. Actually, attention is a lot of spam. I think that I have a pretty good spam filter, but maybe put. Um, Something so I know it's from a client. I'll probably open one saying attention anyway because my spam filter and virus protection is good. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, and Facebook, Gothic Genie Insights. Um, look for the hashtag on uh, Instagram. Um, 
it's a lot to remember when I have like all these different things that I'm trying to promote and push push out there um and I think that's it I'm just gonna go ahead and end this now because I'm kind of like you know trying to remember all these things and it's gonna be in the description box anyway so I'm gonna you know <laughs> spare you having to listen to me anymore and I hope you have a wonderful day or night or whatever time it is that you're watching this I will catch up with y'all later have a good one